Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. Thanks so much to another patron who's joined the patron saints and we're going to look at the game Sundered by Thunder Lotus Games. Now this is another Jace Glover review so thank you to that guy. He has finally torn himself away from Super Smash. I know, I know, nobody expected me to be back so soon after Smash released. I wasn't even sure myself if I could pull away long enough to play something else but here we are. Let's jump straight into it and find out if Sundered Eldritch Edition was worth the break. To provide a little background on the game, Sundered was originally a Kickstarter project launched by Thunder Lotus Games, the company behind the wonderful little game Jotun. The project, which began in January of 2017, managed to receive enough backers to be about 400% funded within the first month and was released on Steam and PS4 only seven months later. It had a rocky start but the developers have been fully committed to improving the game and adding content since launch and now are bringing the definitive addition to Nintendo Switch. Is this just another Metroidvania to go on the giant scrap heap currently on Switch or is this one worth checking out? Let's find out. The game begins with a lone wanderer pressing through a desert storm. It's not long before she comes across some old ruins and a dark power engulfs her, dragging her beneath the sand into a forgotten realm. After a brief tutorial, you find yourself in the sanctuary and a demonic relic speaks to you, saying he'll lend you his powers and this will be the only way for you to escape. After this brief introduction, the story of what became of this shattered world is told only in small snippets as you traverse through the levels and reach special shrines. I appreciated the way much of the story is left to the player to decipher and discover but I feel that on the face of it, it's just too similar to Hollow Knight and others. Lone silent warrior enters broken lands overrun by monsters, check, must fight to survive, check. The story definitely isn't bad and the developers do a decent job of building the world slowly as you progress but I didn't feel like there was anything particularly original. Additionally, there is a tagline you'll see often in relation to this game, resist or embrace. The game gives you choices at various moments throughout to either gain powers by embracing the darkness by offering an elder shard to one of the many shrines or instead resist the darkness by destroying the shard. As far as I can tell, both when playing it and while doing some research online, these choices only lead you to one of three different endings but do not affect the journey otherwise from a story perspective. That's a shame in my opinion and a bit of a missed opportunity. Story scores 13 out of 20. In terms of gameplay, Sundered is a Metroidvania with some roguelike elements included. Like any game of the genre, you'll start off with only a base set of abilities and must find your way through the map to unlock more skills, which in turn let you progress further. The Switch is absolutely buried in Metroidvanias at this point and some of these suffer from pacing issues because unlocking skills too fast makes the game too easy or too short while unlocking them too slowly can make you feel like you're being dragged through the mud. I feel like Thunder Lotus nailed the progression here and new skills become available at a decent clip, even faster if you push yourself straight to the icons on the map. Additionally, while there are definitely some difficulty spikes you'll run into, there is an interesting death mechanic built in that helps you never to feel stuck. As you explore the various areas of the map, killing enemies and breaking items with drop shards. Upon death or whenever you choose to return to the sanctuary via the pause menu, you can access a skill tree and spend all the shards you collected to boost your stats and unlock perks such as increased shard drops or the ability to hold more health elixirs. These additional boosts in power are felt immediately and just about every time I died I was able to return to my point in death and defeat the enemies that had previously wiped me out. You may recall I mentioned roguelike elements were included in the game. This comes in the form of procedurally generated caverns. On the map you'll notice large rooms and each of these is broken into smaller segments. The layout of the larger rooms never changes, but the smaller segments change each time you move between any of the major zones or teleport back to the sanctuary. While I like the idea in concept, Unfortunately, it does not do much for gameplay as you'll notice a handful of cavern layouts used time and time again. 
Controls are simple and make combat feel fluid and fun. The analog sticks control movement, while the B and Y buttons are used to jump and attack respectively. The A button can be used to dodge roll and gives you a short window of invincibility, however this ability is limited to your energy bar which restores after some time. Additionally an air dash is one of the abilities that can be unlocked and is also used with the A button. Chain enough attacks together and you'll charge up a final attack which is a very powerful move that is different depending on which direction you're pressing the button when using it. Another unlock a short way into the game is an energy cannon used via the ZR button. Very cool. With all these moves at your disposal, you will take on hordes and hordes of enemies as well as a few bosses and mini ones. Unlike a game like Hollow Knight where enemies are always spawned in the same locations and map layouts never change, Sundered goes for a more random approach as waves of enemies can spawn at any time. Most of the time the combat's a lot of fun, especially as you begin to power up your abilities but at other times such as right after a death, fighting through wave after wave of enemies can get a little old. Also there are times where the monsters spawn in places that you just cannot get to them and your only choice is to run away. The bosses are without a doubt the most memorable aspect of the game as each is a grandiose battle against an enormous monster. These fights can last 10 minutes or more and will test every bit of your skill. The more health you take away the more they ramp up in difficulty and the last 10% of their life becomes a race against the clock. I love the challenge these added and the way they changed up the otherwise monotonous combat. The gameplay overall then receives 16 out of 20 and those tight controls receive 18 out of 20. The audio and visuals are both of a mixed bag. The hand drawn world generally looks very good, I love the art style, character animations are fluid, bosses look amazing but there are some issues. I already mentioned how a handful of cavern layouts are used over and over again which becomes tiresome. Additionally each zone only has a small number of enemy varieties and recolored versions are used to signify a stronger one. Unfortunately in every area the stronger versions of the enemies have the same color scheme as the environment and can become a pain to see when combat ramps up. Another missed opportunity is the fact that choosing to embrace or resist the darkness doesn't do anything to your character model. I would have loved to see them change into a demonic monster or an angel of light based on the choices you make. One last item of note is performance. There are noticeable frame drops from time to time, usually while moving between caverns and I did once find myself stuck in the ground unable to move. The good news is during combat and boss fights no matter how intense they got, the switch handled it beautifully. For the audio let's start with the negatives, there's really just not a lot here. As you are exploring room after room, you're left with mostly silence and some atmospheric sounds. Now I don't mind when smaller more linear games use this style but backtracking through massive maps with very little to listen to decreases the engagement for me. On the plus side the demonic voice who travels with you is satisfyingly terrible and horrifying, at times literally sending chills down my spine. <laughs> Additionally boss fights again are a standout in regards to the audio. Similar to how the difficulty ramps up as you beat them down, so does the background music. By the time you have them near death, a full epic choir and symphony is belting out at you from the speakers which only adds to the intensity and anxiety. Audio and visuals score a combined 14 out of 20. Sundered Eldritch Edition is £15.49, $19.99 or €19.99. The game's gonna last you around 12 hours on average while it could easily 
triple that for those seeking to unlock each of the game's three endings. For any who love Metroidvanias, I have no issue really recommending the game at this price. In addition to the base game, the Eldritch Edition also comes with a new DLC which adds additional challenges and another boss fight to the game. The DLC included also adds the ability to play with up to four players locally which is a really nice bonus. Unfortunately I lack in the friend department. I feel your pain Jace. So yeah. Can't really comment on the multiplayer. It should be noted too that in North America, sorry to my friends overseas, you will receive a pre-purchase discount of 20%. Total stitch up. If you already own Thunder Lotus's previous game, Jotun. Or if you buy this one first, you should receive 33% off the price of Jotun. That's a pretty good deal. Values scores 17 out of 20. Sundered Eldritch Edition is one of those games that puts me in the strange position where my final score does not truly represent the level of enjoyment I've had with the game. While I believe my scores are fully justified, there is also lots to love about the game and it's one I will revisit for sure and can wholly recommend to fans of the genre. While it's not quite the cream of the crop of the Metroidvania Mania on Switch, it is a worthy addition and one not to be missed. Sundered receives an overall switch up score of 78%. Thanks again to Jace, he just writes amazing reviews and it takes him a lot of time to do it so please leave him some love down in the comments. As always guys, for all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch up. See ya!